Hey guys, welcome back to my house under construction. This is the real, real build project. This is actually my personal house and we're just getting into the drywall phase. Now drywall, when it's all finished, you kind of can't tell the details, but doing a few things differently or special makes a big difference in the end result. So on the build show today, we're going to jump into everything you need to know if you're building a custom home when it comes to drywall. We're going to talk about board thickness. We're going to talk about corner beads. We're gonna talk about mudding and taping and finish levels. We're even gonna get into some costs and some things that you need to tell your drywall contractor to bid on your project so that when you get to the final result, you've got a beautiful house, a house that's gonna be durable and long lasting for your homeowners and a house that's really gonna feel well. It's gonna be a really crisp house. Guys, today's build show all about drywall 101. Let's get going. All right, guys, let me introduce you to Junior Coronado. Junior is a second generation tradesman. Uh, Junior, talk to me first about the type of board that we used on this house. Here we have our typical 5 8 gypsum. Downstairs we have 12 foot board, upstairs we have 10 foot board. Okay, so when most people think gypsum or drywall, they think half inch, but you mentioned this is all 5 8 is that right? Yeah, 5 8 everywhere. And uh, why, why 5 8 rather than maybe half inch on the walls and 5 8 on the ceiling like they do in some parts of the country? Uh, it has a few uh, better benefits. First of all, you get a one hour fire rating on all your outside walls or inside walls even in this matter. And okay. then it creates our finished product into a much better premium product because it hides much more of the imperfections. Yeah, so we frame this house specifically with LVLs, mm -hmm. you know, an engineered lumber so I'd have really straight walls. If you sight down that wall back there, you don't see any curve or dip in that. So we probably could have used 5 8 but over the last 15 years or so, I've always hung the entire house with 5 8 And you mentioned something I think is critical. It adds extra mass to the house. It's heavier. Mm -hmm. Any idea on how much heavier this is than had we used half inch rock on this house? Yeah, typical 12,000 board feet in this house will increase your weight probably 700 pounds or so okay, from so, a half inch sheet. So a little heavier, a little bit more mass. And if you think about uh, you know, adobe houses that were built in the southwest, those houses don't have any insulation. They just have mass. They have thickness. And when the sun tries to heat that up, it's got a lot of mass to heat up before it starts radiating in the house. That's a little bit of the same benefit of why I like 5.8. Mm -hmm. It also tends to be a little quieter. A little bit more mass means that noise has more to go through from room to room. Junior, though, what does that cost? Can you give me any idea? Is that thousands of dollars more to hang this with 5.8 compared to half inch? Typical house, you're looking at two to three hundred dollars. Okay, so. so it's in the hundreds, yeah. really. It's yeah. not that big a deal. So. so with that mass benefit, with straighter walls and a better finish, I think that's kind of a no-brainer. Absolutely. All right, Junior. So next, I want to talk about some of the uh, transitions we've got in the house. You know, here we're in the family room. My mm -hmm. TV's on that wall. As you transition from this wall here to my sloped ceiling. I've got a line there that you're going to see from the front door the whole time you're in the house that I want to be nice and straight. Mm -hmm. I've also got some transitions like into my pop-up here and also corner beads that I want to talk about and mm -hmm. some of the products that we've used for those. Now in the past, uh, when I was working in my production builder days, we used kind of metal, standard metal corner beads everywhere. But I'm seeing over here, you have some different products besides that ready to go for corners. Talk to me about what we're using here. Here we have a much more premium product, a uh, little more durable. Uh, it's a vinyl bead, and we have two options here. This is just a mud set vinyl bead, and then we have a paper face bead, which we'll use in different applications of your house. Okay, so these are both Trim Tech products, Trim Tex products rather. This is their fast edge, and this is vinyl that has a paper facing on it. But this one's an all vinyl bead, and it looks like it's got a nice crisp corner. Why would this be better than just a standard, uh, you know, old school metal uh, corner bead? Uh, the durability, and then here we're doing a level five finish to where this lip and flange here provides a much more feasible edge for us to finish to. Yeah. So whenever we're adding our eighth of mud, this low profile here allows us to build up our mud for our level five finish in a much more crisp way. Yeah, that, uh, and that's what I love about it, Junior, is that really crisp corner. So when you set this, are you pulling out the compressor, stapling this on, nailing this on? How's this actually getting set onto the corner? So this, we just mud set. Uh, there's two forms to do it. You can use a hopper or mm -hmm. the guys can just trowel their mud on first and then set it. So yeah. no tools, low maintenance on our end. Uh, the guys aren't having to carry around 15 different things. 
Just just a hopper or your normal six inch trowel. That's pretty cool. And that hopper over there is a Trimtex uh, branded unit. I'm assuming you bought it from Trimtex. Yes. How much easier is that to use, let's say, than putting staples on or spray adhesive, that sort of thing? Uh, much more easier. It speeds up our process. And again, the big thing on our side of the business is the maintenance. I mean, we don't run through two or three compressors a year, uh, yeah. uh, staple guns, guns jamming, going to Home Depot to buy staples. Uh, it's a much more efficient process. A little water us. cleanup and yeah. you're all set with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, where are we using or why are you choosing the vinyl compared to this paper uh, faced one? So we're using the vinyl everywhere except for, like you mentioned earlier, this off angle up here. Okay. Uh, the fast edge is a much more flexible product okay. to where you can close the angle and open the angle as needed within a tolerance. Yeah, so with this, you know, greater than 45 degree angle, you can kind of make this fit whatever angle you Correct. need. Correct, yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. You've got a couple of other profiles that I wanted to ask about. So this, what's this one called again? This is the Jumbo Mud Set Corner okay. Bead. So that's what we're using most everywhere. Yes. And what is this guy? Where are we using this guy? So here you have some off angle inside angles, mm -hmm. and it's essentially the same product but similar oh, to the, the finish side. Okay, correct. Gotcha. Yeah, this is the finish side here. So it's, it's essentially the same as the mud set jumbo bead, but it's for your off angles and inside angles. Okay, so we're using that on this angle right behind us here. Uh -huh. And how do you set this, Junior? Same product, same, uh, you can use a hopper if you'd like, but what we do traditionally with this is we'll just trowel our mud on, set a laser up and make sure that the bead is nice and straight on your off angle. Love it, man. I actually saw you guys set up the laser earlier. They're, they're using that laser to get uh, all of those um, corners correct. Yeah. But how are you setting up the laser when you do this inside corner? Same thing, you're just putting a laser on the inside and then setting this to it? Yes. Because this comes in what, 10 foot sections? 10 foot sections. Okay, and we've got a, I don't know, 18 foot run, so you're gonna have a joint in there. So having that laser set up makes a lot of sense. Yes, of course. That's gonna be great. All right, uh, and actually we have a sample of a standard metal corner bead. And we didn't do this on purpose, but it's funny to see it kinked <laughs> like this. Uh, this is what I used for years in the production builder days. And one thing that's interesting about metal versus this vinyl is I think that in my house with as many kids that I have, a dog running around, I'm definitely going to get some, some dings on my corners. You know what would be kind of fun, Junior? Let's do one corner in metal and one corner in this vinyl bead from Trimtex and let's beat on a little bit. Think yeah. you can set that up for me? Yeah, that'd be great. All right, friends, my master bedroom, Junior set up this corner with his guys for me. Uh, so we've got two different corner beads. Junior, you know which is which off the top of your head? This is just your run of the mill metal 90 degree corner bead. Okay, so you're seeing that metal poke through, that's how you know. Um, so that's a metal corner bead. Mm -hmm. And then it looks like we've got a break right here. And then this is? This is your low profile jumbo mud set vinyl trim text bead. All right, man, go for it. Oh no. Do the honors. <laughs> make me do the honors. It's my master bedroom. This feels you're, wrong. You're, you're, I know we can fix it, but it still feels wrong. Your house. All right, I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna calibrate to the light, uh, Happy Gilmore tap, tippity tap it in, and let's see what happens. So this is the metal. Oh, <laughs> yes. That didn't take much at all, did it, dude? You can see that metal deformed. Oh, and we also split it up here too. Yeah. Now this had one coat of dried mud. The guys just put a second coat on. Oh, a hard hit. That looks bad. Oh man. All right, so I went tippity tap on the first one, just so short tap. Not bad. Pretty good. I don't see any deformation. Still not bad. Pretty All right, good. a little harder. All right, so we, we broke the mud on that, but that mud is still wet. The corner's still straight. The corner's still straight. I think that could be fixed. Yeah, even if we had to fix it, just a little bit of hot mud or quick set, and that's it. Yep, let's try one slightly harder. Dude, wow. I, I hit that really hard, and that barely moved. Wow. <laughs> that's impressive, <laughs> man. That's hardly moving. No, I did, oh, look, feel over here. I, I made it come out a little bit on this side. The mud gave way. In fairness though, this has only got one coat of mud on it. It doesn't truly have its next block coat, right? Yeah. Uh, of mud dried yet. So it might actually do better. But I'll tell you, just based on this corner right here, this is a no brainer. Yeah. I mean, it stayed square throughout, even you hitting it pretty well. And I mean, we can see down here, this fixing this is gonna take you 
a few hours time. cutting this out. I mean, this would just take a matter of minutes and some hot mud. Yeah, pretty awesome test. Yeah. All right, Junior, I see a couple other things. What are these two uh, pieces right here? So here, there's a few odds and ends at your house where we're able to use some cool products. Uh, this is a jumbo L-bead. So if you're familiar to the drywall trade, you know what an L-bead looks like. This is just an extreme buildup on that same product. Okay, so L-bead, let's, uh, for these guys who aren't familiar with that, this is where we've got a drywall return on a window, right? Mm -hmm. Where we're doing inside corners. Uh, my skylights have a drywall return on them. But most of my house is getting trimmed, where I'm, I'm going to do a wood uh, interior jam and then a wood casing on the outside. But like in my pop-up up there, that would be a perfect spot to do a drywall return. No one's going to ever see those windows. They're kind of hidden up in that pop-up. So instead of doing the traditional drywall on the inside jam and mm -hmm. then doing, let's say, a tearaway bead, how does this work? So this, we would just sheetrock your return, mm -hmm. and then we set this from the front side we mud the front side, but we don't have to do any work to your return side. Ah, so there's no mudding going on here. Correct. The painter's going to come. He's going to put a bead of caulk between this and the window, paint the surface, and you're done. Yeah, that's it. That's kind of cool. That would sure make a drywall return easy, wouldn't it? Yeah, much more efficient than us having a finisher up there for a few hours or you having to get a trim carpenter up there. Now, uh, Junior, I noticed in a couple places on the ceiling the word Madeira. Uh, <laughs> what's going on in those areas? So here, uh, kind of atypical, but you have some wood ceilings here. Mm -hmm. So we've had our on-site guys mark where you're getting wood, tongue and groove, walls, or ceilings. Mm -hmm. And we're just doing a one-hour fire tape on those, just one coat. Yeah, so in this kitchen ceiling, where Madeira means wood in Spanish, by the way, I actually would prefer not to go to that level five finish because mm -hmm. when the carpenter comes now with the, everything just fire taped, it's really easy to see where all the joists are mm -hmm. above that. Had we gone to level five and primed the ceiling and then put wood on, it's that much harder for the carpenter when he shows up. Plus, honestly, you don't need to go to that level if it's going to get covered with wood. So in this family room, or pardon me, in this kitchen space, in my laundry, mm -hmm. on some of these other walls that I know are gonna get wood. I spoke with Junior ahead of time. That also saves me money as the homeowner because I don't need him to spend an extra three hours finishing this ceiling when yeah. it's not necessary. You know, the one thing we didn't talk about already was Quiet Rock. Okay. Um, we have a couple of special walls in the house that got hung with this board that has kind of a light bluish uh, uh, kind of face <laughs> on it. What is that, Junior? So that is Quiet Rock Easy Snap is the one we use here. And it's just a sound deadener, sound preventer, whatever you want to call it. But it reduces vibrations through the wall um, in the gypsum product. Yeah, so I made a video that I'm not sure where it'll publish on this. So look for that in the link in the description on uh, doing all the details of that between my daughter's bedroom and my boy's bedroom. But you'll notice that we use that upstairs in between two kids' bedrooms. Mm -hmm. We use it here in the family room between the spot where my TV is going to be and the wall that separates my master bedroom. Mm -hmm. We also use it on the exterior walls in my master bedroom. Any idea on cost differential on that? Is there any uh, guidance you can give us on, uh, on those, those products? Yeah, there's uh, not a substantial cost, but there is an increased cost, maybe 75%. But you're getting a much more premium product in how the noise transfers through the walls. One thing we'd recommend is if you're going to do it on a wall, use it on the one that has less penetrations. Yeah, for sure. That's mm -hmm. right. That's a great tip. We got a whole soundproofing video on that, so go stay tuned for that. But Junior, great tips, man. Yeah. I really appreciate your help. Uh, I'll put a link to Junior's Instagram feed if you want to follow him. He's got <laughs> some great photos from his jobs. He works for some other really top-notch contractors here in Austin, Texas, besides me. Uh, hopefully, you learned something on Drywall 101. I'll also put a link to some of these Trimtex products. Uh, we showed today. They have way more than this. This is just a small part of their catalog. And by the way, they also have some great sales reps out there. Uh, Don is my Austin guy. They've got guys uh, all over the country and an awesome van stocked full of different supplies to show you. So if you've got a Trimtex person in your area, I highly recommend you schedule an appointment with them. Or if not, get their catalog and see what options they have. These are definitely top of line products that I'm excited to have in my house. Because remember, everything that Junior and I talked about today it's going to be totally hidden from the end user. That's why production builders don't typically do these things. Mm -hmm. uh, they're using the less expensive products, which are in the end means they've got a less good product, a less durable house, a less crisp house at the end. But by spending a little bit of time and effort talking to your drywall contractor ahead and saying, hey, what can we do to make sure my house has the good stuff in it? 
that's all it takes to get a much, much better house. And as we talked about, these are not crazy expensive. Uh, as a for example, um, this trim text box right here that has this bead in it that we're using, mm -hmm. can you give me any idea on differential of cost between this and like standard metal corner bead? Typical house under $100. Yeah, so it's not a lot of money. Yeah, not a lot. Not a lot of cash. I'll put a link uh, in the description to all those products as well. Guys, big thanks for joining us for Drywall 101. If you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button, guys. We've got new content here every Tuesday and every Friday. Follow me on Twitter or Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show.